We've all seen those shots of water rebounding off the surface, but in this video we're going to capture the amazing shapes that can happen under the water. When making a cup of tea, you'll surely have noticed the wonderful swirling patterns created as the milk's poured in. But what if our cup was made of glass? We could watch the milk unfurl below the surface instead. Well, switch that glass cup to a glass fish tank and change the milk to paint, and we suddenly have a very photogenic subject. Once lit with flash guns, we can freeze this flow of paint mid-motion and capture incredible shapes and colours underwater. All it takes is a little patience and a lot of water, so let's take a look at the kit you'll need to get started. We have a glass fish tank. Plastic is fine, but it will distort the light more than glass panes and therefore degrade the image quality. We're using acrylic paint. Because it's oil based, it won't mix with the water. Instead, it'll hold together more easily as it drifts through the tank, creating more sculpture like shapes. Kit wise, we have a pair of flash guns. We're using the Canon 580EX and 600EX speed lights. If you only have one flash gun, that's fine, but you'll get better results with two. Each flash gun has a wireless receiver, and we have one transmitter for the hot shoe of our Canon 5D Mark III. Plus we have a tripod to keep our camera in a fixed position. You'll also need some way of filling the tank of water, so a jug or two might come in handy. You'll also need a sturdy table plus a white paper background. This could be some photographic paper roll background, or it could just be some A3 sheets of paper taped to your wall. As the tank is really heavy when full of water, we only filled it up halfway and then carried it to the table. We then filled it to the top with a jug. You'll have to empty it in between each pouring, and as it's heavy when full up, take care to avoid any accidents. Mark where the tank sits by placing blue tack on the table so you know where to replace it each time. As the water settles in the tank, you'll see lots of air bubbles on the glass. Knock out the air bubbles that accumulate with a wooden spoon. Also wipe the exterior of the tank clean and then use a squeegee to remove any small bubbles stuck to the insides of the tank. The flashlight will show up all bubbles that are left because it's side lit and side light enhances these bubbles as little shadows. Next put your camera on a tripod and centre it with the tank. No special lens is required for this but try your best to fill the frame with the entire tank. We use the 100mm macro lens but any standard zoom lens will do. Then take the wooden spoon and hold it in the middle of the tank, a friend may come in handy at this point. Now pre-focus on the spoon and then switch the focus to manual to lock it off. Your focus will then be maintained at this point throughout the shoot. Grab your flash guns, turn them on and attach the wireless triggers to each of them. Then put a hot shoe foot plate on both of them and place them either side of the fish tank. We set each flash gun to 1 16th power which will help to decrease recycle times of the flashes. In manual mode on our camera, we want to use enough depth of field so the whole ink flow is sharp. And as we're shooting up fairly close, we used an aperture of f11 to do this. We set the shutter speed to 1 200th of a second, as this is the maximum flash sync speed of most Canon DSLRs. If the shutter opens faster than 1 200th of a second, the moving shutter blind will obscure part of the image, indicated by a black side of the frame. We also set our ISO to 100, to keep the images well exposed. On your Canon, set high speed continuous drive to allow multiple photos to be taken when you hold down the shutter release button. This means you get a few bites of the cherry before the water becomes a murky mess. Prepare the paint by mixing the oil based acrylic paint with a little warm water, otherwise the paint won't disperse nicely when it's in the water. You could use a remote shutter release if you're doing this project on your own, so that you could shoot and pour the paint simultaneously. Well we had a friend to pour the paint while we took the photos. It was a lot easier as the pourer could concentrate on getting the technique just right. When pouring the paint into the water, pour very close to the surface of the water, as when dropped from a height the paint falls at a faster velocity and then it impacts the water, creating bubbles as it sinks. The paint will unfold more photogenically when poured lower next to the water. Once you've got the initial few photos of the paint pouring in, you'll sometimes get another chance for a second pour, but usually the paint will have made the water too murky for any more real shots, 
so it's time to rinse and repeat. It takes a while to set up and clean and refill the tank again, but once you're ready, it's worth shooting as much as possible. You never know what shapes you'll get. And here are some of our best images from the day.